Hi guys, it's Maddie. Um, finally, almost a month after I gave birth, I am sitting down to film my birth story video. Um, I may have to finish this later, and there may be some weird jump cuts. Uh, I'm a mom. I'm also tired, but my daughter is passed out right now. A little bit of a backstory into my pregnancy. I did have gestational diabetes in my pregnancy, and I did measure. Um, so I didn't show until I was like 17 weeks. And then um, towards the end of my pregnancy, I was actually measuring like two weeks ahead. So that made me really nervous. We had a growth scan done when I was 37 weeks, I believe. Her, she was measuring the 86th percentile and her shoulders were measuring in the 98. So I was terrified of her shoulders coming out. And I was also like, she's going to have linebacker shoulders. I did do really well with my blood sugars. Um... But I was just really scared and I did, I was told to gain 15 to 25 pounds in my pregnancy and I did gain about 35. So I was very large um, and I'm 5'2". So I just had this very big belly, um, especially at the end. So I was just in a lot of pain, um, like my hips hurt and especially towards the end there was a lot of pressure on my pelvis so i did see nurse midwife i said i'd like to give her a chance to come on her own so after 40 weeks go ahead. so we set up an induction date um for i went in the afternoon of april 19th so i was doing the 16th i went in on the 19th so it was 40 weeks and three days and they put a balloon in my cervix uh to dilate me to four centimeters i was a two a tight two is what they said the balloon wasn't bad it wasn't uh uncom it was kind of uncomfortable a little crampy i did bleed with it which is normal because your cervix is opening but it really wasn't bad getting it placed either um i didn't have my cervix checked so i did fall at 36 weeks so i had it checked then to make sure that i wasn't actually in labor because that was my first time having braxton hicks um yeah, I just fell like three feet and hit my butt. And they were like, no, you have to come in and make sure that nothing bad happened. Especially if you're having Braxton Hicks for the first time. Um, that was that one was really uncomfortable. Um, the other ones weren't too bad. I did not get my cervix checked again until I was 39 weeks. Because I was curious to see if I was dilated. Also, I want to say real quick. I see a lot on mommy TikTok. People that are like, fight the power, fight the doctors. Like home birth or like advocate for yourself and like all this stuff and like I am so down with advocating for yourself but I also want to say that you should find a care team that aligns with your values and what you are wanting and that will also respect you the nurse midwives I saw um all had advanced degrees they they rotated so I saw a bunch of people um they were really amazing and they already do delayed cord clamping they don't do anything without your permission um and when i was in labor like i was like i don't want to push on my back and they said okay and so it's important to feel respected but also have a care team whose values align with yours and then i was admitted to labor and delivery for that night they had this giant ass bathtub so i got to take a nice bath while i'm dilating just relax and um go to sleep um jacob did spend the night with me um from 7 a.m to 7 p.m i could have one other person and that was my best friend carissa so she was there um with us that first day a little bit and then came the next morning that morning around 2 or 3 a.m i don't remember they started the pitocin i did get an iv placed in my hand the night before that was one of the most painful parts that hurt more than the epidural okay that iv in my hand fucking hurt for some reason so bad it hurt worse than getting the balloon placed and the balloon itself um also at some point in the middle of the night the nurses were coming in to check on me she they ended up like tugging on the balloon to see if it was ready to come out and it was so she just pulled it out and then i went back to sleep so they started the pitocin and i was kind of having just like cramps and i was like okay they started it really low because they still wanted me to be able to sleep they started the pitocin eventually as we got more into the morning i think they turned it up a little bit or it was just working, I don't know, but I was in a lot of pain, and so I I couldn't sleep through them anymore. So they, I think they told me, when you can't sleep through them anymore, let us know, and I was like, bet. So I was like, hey, I'm not able to sleep through them. Uh, they're coming, you know, I didn't even time them. So they came in, made sure I was actually contracting, checked me, I think they checked my cervix. They may not have. 
this is all kind of a blur. I'm going to be real with you. I really trusted my medical team. And so I wasn't like over the top worried about everything. I kind of just let them do their thing, if that makes sense. So um, they were able to give me this medication that every hour um, that took away all the pain so I could continue to sleep. However, this medicine made me, they said it's like being drunk. I don't know what exactly it was, but your girl was messed up. Your girl was gone. Your girl was drugged as fuck. I don't know what it was, but yeah, I was able to go back to sleep on it and um, they would come in and give it to me every hour, basically. I think I had to ask. So towards the end of the hour, it would start wearing off and I was like, hey, <laughs> like... I'm awake and I'm hurting and I would like to go back to sleep. And they'd come in and drug me and I was like, bet, and I'd be out. So so this went on for a couple of hours, I think like three, four-ish. Um, and then around 9 a.m., 8 or 9, they came in to break my water. Um, this is something that's standard if you're getting induced. If I wasn't getting induced, I would not have gotten my water broken. Remember if they broke my water before or after the epidural. I'm going to be real with you. But... At one point, I was like, I got to poop. I got to poop. I have to poop. And I was having really bad contractions. And the nurse was like, I don't think you have to poop. And I was like, I'm going to poop. And so at this point, I had only been given the, like, drunk meds, we'll call them. So I went into the bathroom, and I was, like, trying to poop. It was just pressure from the contractions. So I was like, okay. Uh, so I got back in the bed. He's coming in to do my epidural, um, this doctor. Jacob was amazing. He, like, we put our heads on our shoulders and he did my epidural. I stayed perfectly still. I was a good patient. And then he was like, I don't think it's placed correctly. I have to redo it. Which I will say that I would rather have a doctor redo it and have it work than have it not work. Because I've heard stories where only half your body's numb or like, no. So he redid it like right away. It was really quick. I, right before I got my epidural, got in the bed and was having such a painful contraction and it was really long. That's the thing with Pitocin um, is that, like I said, they start really intense and they're longer. They're not like these cute little contractions. Not like any of them are like easy. They're all uncomfortable, but they are more intense and longer. And I don't know how long this contraction was, but it was, they're like, that's the Pitocin. And I was so uncomfortable. Carissa was rubbing my hips and I was just like, oh my God, it hurts so bad. I need more of that drunk stuff. And they were like, we're, he's coming in to give you the epidural. Like, hang on. So he came in, gave me an epidural and I was good to go. So it was probably around 10 a.m. when I got the epidural, I believe. Again, timeline is a little wonky for me. So he gave me the epidural and then your girl went back to sleep. I was like, okay, I'm numb. I'm tired. They were like, yeah, if you can sleep, sleep, because then when you, it's time to push, you'll have more energy. So I said, bet. I couldn't eat after midnight, but I was allowed to drink water um, through my labor, which ended up causing an issue. <laughs> we'll get to that. Went back to sleep. I think Chris and Jacob might have even taken naps at that point. I was dead to the world. I was outy speak outy. I was done um which the night before I hadn't slept super great I didn't fall asleep until pretty late because I was really nervous you know but after the drunk meds I was like and then the epidural I was like out and then they came in around two was it two sometime in the afternoon and they wanted to check me um it was the midwives and um I was dilated to a 10 so they checked me and they were like, it's actually time to start pushing. And I said, bet, okay. Like I had slept up to that point and it was like really not uh, climactic. It was anticlimactic. I was like, okay, time to start pushing. Um, I told them I didn't want to push flat on my back and they were really amazing. So even though I had an epidural, they put me in all these different positions. I was on my hands and knees. I was basically like squatting at one point. At one point, um... Like, my hips were raised and my, like, legs were hanging off the bed. And, like, she was putting me in all these different positions. And through me pushing um, the first hour and a half, it was just this midwife and my nurse. Um, I see these videos on TikToks where there's, like, tons of people. They said that when it was time for her to be born, they'd bring in a couple other nurses. But that this was it. And I was like... Again, anticlimactic, cool. So we're pushing, we're vibing. However, shortly into me pushing, 
I don't know exactly when this started. Through most of my labor, my eyes were shut. I'm gonna be real with you. I was kind of like trying to be in the zone, stay relaxed, mind over matter, because even though I had an epidural or whatever, it's still, in it's still intense. It's still a lot of feelings. It's still like, okay, I'm bringing a child into this world. And so through most of my labor, my eyes were shut. I was just like trying to get in my zone and almost like meditating, I guess, if you want to say, because um, it went by really quickly as well. However, part of the reason I shut my eyes and had to go into this like, we just got to do this. The pain in between my neck and shoulders, something, she was on a nerve of some kind because holy, guys, that was so bad. For some reason, I, I got that pain and it was, they wanted me to go chin to chest and push her out and I was like, I can't. It hurt so bad. I don't know what was wrong. <laughs> Um, they don't know because if it was the epidural, it would have started. I think at one point she just came down. Here's the it thing. She was facing sunny side up. Babies are supposed to come out facing down. So when they're facing up, it can cause a lot of pressure on your spine. So I think she was just pinching something. So about an hour and a half, two hours into me pushing, another midwife comes in and they start whispering a little bit. And I was like, what's wrong? What's wrong? Like I'm panicking. Like whispering is never good. Like what the fuck? I, they say she's she's just she's face up and she's having some trouble coming down but you're still doing okay she's still doing okay and we're just gonna try to get her out this way they said her head might need a little more time to like compress I think or elongate turn into a cone head and fit through there and I said okay because sometimes women can birth babies face up no issue and I was like okay and again we're in all these different positions and at this I, I, I'm guessing this is about an hour and a half in. They start realizing she's stuck. Like, she can't get around this. We're having issues. So, a little bit about the nurse midwives is they are not able to perform C-sections, use the vacuum, or the forceps. Um, they will assist an OB in doing those things, but they are not able to do them. I'm chilling. Also, I was fully aware that I was probably going to tear and I had weighed the pros and cons of an episiotomy. And I had said, if y'all can't get her out and you've gotten her shoulders around my pubic bone and your hat, like, if you think it would be beneficial, you can just give me an episiotomy. I'm down. Like, we had discussed that beforehand because I thought she was going to be giants. Um, they told me I very well may have a 10 pound baby. I'm like, she's coming out. Like my biggest worry was her shoulders. I did not expect her head to be an issue. Now looking at my daughter, uh, those measurements were a little off. And I think that if she would have been face down, we wouldn't have had an issue at all. That's what they've said. So I'm pushing all of a sudden at one point. Also, so I'm in the bed, eyes closed, pushing with every contraction. Jacob or Carissa was always at my head, sometimes both of them. They were always encouraging me to breathe. And then next to them was my nurse who would count to 10 and then my midwife. And so I was laying there and like they'd be reminding me to breathe. They would be telling me I was doing great. Um, at one point I wanted warm rags heating pad for my neck and shoulders like if that wouldn't have been hurting this would have been so much less intense got that for me so like they're talking to me they're getting me water getting me sips jacob was amazing and helping me reposition so was my midwife um she was a very strong woman so they were amazing at getting me in these positions helping me hold these positions the four of them so we were vibing in between my contractions laughing talking relaxing and yeah, my contractions, from what I remember, seemed to come really quickly though. So yeah, at one point I opened my eyes. I had heard some other people talking. My neck and shoulders are hurting so bad. I'm getting a little bit nervous about the fact that she's stuck and I'm starting to get really fucking tired. This was about two and a half hours into me pushing. And I opened my eyes and there is like, I think six, four or six people standing at my feet, and a woman I have never met, her hand is in my badge. She may have introduced herself. They may all have come in and introduced themselves. I was so overwhelmed at that point, though, when people would try to talk to me, unless it was telling me to push, and it, they were counting, unless it was my midwife telling me to push, my nurse counting, or Carissa and Jacob encouraging me, I did not want to be talked to. I did not, nope, like, during contractions, and at this point in labor, I did not... So these people were probably coming in and I was probably telling them to shut the fuck up. Like, 
So I'm not saying they had bad bedside manner. I'm saying it was probably me. Because I, I remember at one point too, I was like, I don't care. Like, I want her out. I'm tired. I'm ready to meet my kid. I'm scared that she's stuck. Help me get her out. So then they tell me they're bringing in an OB because they're going to try to turn her. And I was like, cool, get her in here. Let's turn her. I want her out. And they bring in this OB. Um, they were able to successfully turn her to where she was face down. She flipped right back. <laughs> right back. They turned her. And then I didn't even get a chance to push. Also, this doctor, I hated her at this point. She made me play tug of war with her so I would push hard. So I'm holding this blanket and she was pulling hard as fuck. I swear this doctor was so fucking strong. And she was, they're like, she's only pulling with one hand. And I was like, I don't care. Like, she's pulling too hard. And at this point, I'm, I think the other reason was I was so tired that I couldn't push the whole 10 10 seconds or she counted to 10. I don't know if it's faster or slower than 10 seconds. I'm guessing it was around 10 seconds. So each contraction, it counts to 10 and I'd push and then we'd let out and push for another 10 seconds and let out and push for another 10 seconds and then have a break between contractions. At this point, I am fucking exhausted. I am not able to push for the 10 seconds, especially on that third one. Usually on the third one, I was like, I can't, I don't have anything. And this doctor was like, you want the baby out? We're playing tug of war. And there was a couple times I was like, I'm gonna let go. She's like, don't let go, I'm gonna fall. And I was like, I'm gonna let go. And I did, I was able to push through, but like I'm pulling against her and trying to push this kid out. And there's all this pressure. Like I said, even though I had an epidural. I also went through a whole epidural bag. At one point I was like, I'm starting to feel them. They fucking hurt. And I had a potty mouth for this. My mom did raise me better, but, it, you know, it was intense. I, I have part of this story that I am not very proud of. It's coming up. So this doctor came back, and he was really cool. Um, and he refilled my epidural. So, because they didn't realize it was empty, because usually that doesn't happen. <laughs> she flips her, she flips back. And she was like, Mom, it's getting time where we, we're going to have to do an emergency c-section and I was like no because I told Jacob my whole pregnancy the last thing that I want is a c-section especially an emergency c-section get the vacuum get the forceps give me an episiotomy do not cut me open I did sign the consent form for an, an, a c-section if I needed it and I did end up needing it this was not coercion this was not whatever so um I said she had flipped back and she told me, you know, it's getting to be time. And I said, go get the forceps. I said, can you use a forceps or a vacuum? Like, let's get her out. I don't want a C-section. And she said, I don't use the vacuum. I can go get forceps. But she's a little bit further in than I would like her to be. And I don't like her position. And I was like, okay. Like, but are you willing? She said, but I'm willing to try. And I said, okay. And she said, if this doesn't work, though, it's time for a C-section. And I said, okay. Because I had been pushing for so long and it was starting to cause some issues for both me and baby. So, <laughs> she comes back with the forceps. I had my eyes completely shut for this because I could hear the metal clanking. I did not want to see them. I was scared as fuck. Um, this is the part where I pooped on the table. Her using the forceps, it was just an incredible amount of pressure. And I ended up pooping a little bit. But I feel like it's warranted at that point. Like, So, she gets them in there. It takes her a minute to make sure they're positioned correctly. And then I believe I pushed through three contractions with the forceps. So the first two, I'm giving it all I got. And the third time, I am having so much pressure. I feel like she's about to come out. So I get this like newfound strength. And I am giving it all I got because I am not having a C-section. Like that is all I'm thinking. I am like holding the bed. I am pushing and like fuck my neck and back. In the third contraction, uh, we're doing, you know, the three I count to 10, take a breath, count to 10 again. And we were on the second time. My nurse had gotten to like five or six. And she takes the forceps out. And I said, I'm not done pushing. I'm not done pushing. And she said, it's time for an emergency C-section. Her heart rate started to drop. And I also, through the end of my um, 
labor here, I was sucking down a fuck ton of water. I was so thirsty. This was like the only thing keeping me calm. I knew she was not turned right. And I was kind of panicking and I was just so thirsty, so tired. So I just wanted like the coldest ice water known to man. And Carissa was a bad bitch and ran into the hallway and kept refilling these fucking waters for me because I was chugging them. So the doctor was like, no, it's time for an emergency C-section. At this point, I'm exhausted. And I said, I need a drink of water. And she said, no, ma'am, I'm taking you to surgery. Y'all might be like, bitch, you really wanted... I was so out of it at this point. I feel like moms can understand. And I was also just like, what the fuck is happening? You're going to wake her up. Go away. Don't fuck with her. So they wheel me out into the hallway and i also remember at this point i was like i want carissa to meet her it was like six o'clock and i was like i want carissa to meet her though i want my friend to meet her like she because after carissa left this day she was going into the field she's in the national guard and i was like my friend needs to meet her like not maddie your baby's heart rate's dropping i did not know this at the time um so we roll in and they tell me we're gonna bring your boyfriend in in a minute whatever and at this point i am fucking pissed i am on my back i was on my back for the forceps my neck and shoulders hurt and i am exhausted i'm in so much pain i'm explaining all of this because what i did next my mom got secondhand embarrassment from and she never met these fucking people okay i was really overwhelmed not an excuse but any woman that has been in this situation or a similar one can probably relate so I'm being told, I'm telling them, I want to be turned on my side. I want to be turned on my side. And then doctor, the doctor that had numbed me was in there, that done my epidural. And I was like, oh my God, hey, like I really liked him. And then he injects me with something where I, first of all, at this point I got really cold. And then just not from the meds. I was just really cold, I think, because I was so exhausted. And then he injected me, whatever he injected me with, I felt like I was on fire from my head to my toe toes I, it was so uncomfortable and then they switched me to the the next bed eventually it, this felt like it took forever apparently from the time I was rolled into the operating room until she was born was like 13 minutes so I'm so uncomfortable um at this point they were trying to keep me calm but I'm like I'm on fire and I'm fucking cold and the, the doctor that was numbing me laughed and I was just that's probably an appropriate response because I was being a belligerent asshole. Um, I was like, cover me up, turn me on my side. And they were like, Miss Moore, like we're about to perform surgery. Like you have to calm down and we can't do these things. I ended up calling the doctor that delivered my daughter a cunt. I told her she was being a cunt because she wouldn't turn me on my side and give me a blanket. Maddie, they're trying to deliver your baby. Y'all, I don't know what was going through my head. I really don't. So they put me on the other bed and I'm like, I'm just angry and tired and just, this was not, I was mad at the world at this point. This was not directed towards them. And I did end up apologizing. We will get there. So I'm laying there and the, the doctor that had numbed me stayed at my head and he put a pillow, this weird pillow under my head. And I was like, my fucking neck and back hurt. Like I hadn't been super cussing through my labor. Like sometimes I'd be like, oh fuck. But I was not scream cussing like I was at people um i told him to fucking move that and then i told him to put it back and it was a whole thing i also want to say i had not prepped the area i couldn't see the area but then shaved and i really didn't give a fuck and neither do doctors and nurses and all those people so i was like fuck it no in the future when i have a kid and i have my scheduled c-section i will be getting shaved or waxed from the tits down this because i will get into wax so I had like a full like 80s bush, okay? That's TMI, but I did. They probably should have taken the time to shave that area at least a little bit because holy fuck. Anyway, so finally, like I'm laying on the bed. He puts the pillow back under and I am so panicked at this point. Like the, I feel like I'm going to cry. The one thing I didn't want to happen is happening she got stuck is she okay right now because they ran me down here jacob is getting dressed to come in here are they gonna get him in here in time like am i gonna be okay after this like i am fucking terrified also because she was already in my vagina her head was out of my uterus they had to push her head 
and push her back up into my uterus to pull her out. And I was just so fucking scared. At this point, I'm feeling really drugged too. And I don't know if that was just from being tired or what they gave me. But at this point too, another reason I probably was feeling out of it, they were having trouble keeping my blood pressure up. So at this point, I was just so panicked. But my dad always says to me, you can do anything for a short period of time that over a long period of time would likely kill you. And I just thought that. And I was like, okay, I can't do anything right now my neck and shoulders back hurt so fucking bad I'm so fucking scared right now but I can't do anything there's nothing I can do they didn't strap my arms down and he did let me lay them on my chest but he said don't touch the drape the drape was up and they didn't lower it because when they pulled her out she wasn't breathing so I felt them lift her out I felt them push her back up in my my vagina and then I felt them lift her out. And then the pain in my neck and shoulders completely went away at that moment. And I knew she was out. But there wasn't this like, congratulations, showing her over the curtain, lowering the curtain. No. She wasn't crying. And I, at that moment, I feel her get lifted out. And I'm like, oh, my neck and shoulders feel better. And I look around and realize Jacob isn't in there. And I was just like, it's okay. They're going to get him in here. It's okay. And then I realized... My baby isn't crying. And I'm like, why isn't she crying? And they're like, they're working on her. She's okay. It's going to be okay. And I'm panicking. I don't know how long she wasn't breathing for, but that APGAR test, the first one they do to evaluate your baby, she scored really low on. Her hands and feet were also uh, very discolored for the first 24 hours because of the lack of oxygen. Also, apparently my uterus was a little bit too warm. Um, so that was just great. Shortly after she was born, I heard her start crying, um, and it was just this relief. I don't know if she was, I think she was crying before they brought Jacob in. Somehow he just didn't get in there in time. I don't fucking know what happened there, but he came in, and he came right over to me, and I was like, no, go check on her. Like, is she okay? Is she breathing? Like, she wasn't crying, and I kind of start panicking again, and he goes over, and he kind of looks, and he's like, they're doing stuff with her, but she's crying. She's breathing. She's okay. And I was like, okay, okay. And he kept coming over to me. And I was like, go over to her. Like, oh, I feel like I'm going to cry again. I was like, she's new. This was so scary. Like, go over to her. Go hold her. Go be with her. Go be ready. And so, and he hadn't brought his phone. So he ran back and got his phone at some point during all this. So I guess they're working on her for a minute. Or they were, you know, they had to do the measuring her and all that shit. Um. They decided to do that real quick. I did want golden hour. Did not get it. But that's okay. Um, so they started putting me back together. And Jacob went and took pictures and showed me. And I was just like, what's wrong with her hands and feet? You know. She did weigh 7 pounds, 15 ounces. And she was 21 inches long. So she was right under 8 pounds. Another ounce, she would have been 8 pounds. Um, so she's a very long baby. And Jacob came around and was holding her. Uh, he was holding her in one arm, and I was like, don't drop her. <laughs> and then she wasn't crying, and I was like, is she okay? Like, she's not crying. And Jacob was like, she's just looking around. And at that point, they took her and Jacob into the recovery room. They were like, we're going to take them to the recovery room. We're going to finish getting you stitched up here. And I think if I would have been like, no, I want them to stay. I think they might have let them. But at this point, I was just so fucking happy. She was here. She was okay. I was going to be okay. And, like, that the pain in my neck and back was gone. And, you know, I was like, her dad's got her. Jacob went with her. So, at this point, I apologized to the nurses and doctors. And they laughed and were like, it's okay. Like, we know this was a scary situation. Um, so I got stitches on my C-section and then I also got one stitch vaginally because of the forceps, they caused me to tear a little bit. Um, it was an internal stitch and then I had some other like small tearing that didn't need, um, stitches. So after I got wheeled into the recovery room, I wanted to hold my baby, obviously. Jacob came and kind of brought her over to me, but I was, like, really, really shaky and, like, did not feel good. Like, I felt really out of it. This is really fuzzy. 
like it kind of feels like it was a dream. I don't remember it. I'm sure, you know, it was a lot of trauma. Uh, I was tired and then the blood pressure issues and all that. So they went in another cover room. Jacob's just sitting there with her. She is just chilling with him. He did hold her for her first hour and a half of life. Um, also, while I was getting stitched shut, they snuck my friend Carissa down to the recovery room to hold her. So I was the third person to hold her, um, besides like the nurses. And honestly, I'm okay with that. I'm not like offended. Like I should have been first or I should have been second. Like I'm so glad people that loved her were there to hold her. And yes, I think golden hour is beneficial and important, but I also feel like because she got that time with her dad, they are so close and I'm kind of happy that they got that. Would I go, if I could choose, would I choose to have a vaginal delivery and have golden hour? A hundred percent. However, making positive of the situation, I am glad they got that time together. Um, does that make sense? <laughs> so we're in the recovery room and they said that because of the complications that I had and she had, they wanted to excuse me, put her on some antibiotics just to make sure that nothing, that she didn't get uh, any type of infection or anything like that with my uterus being warm, with us having issues. And I was like, okay, back up a little bit though. So I, I'm in the recovery room and I'm like, I want to sit up and hold my daughter. Like that is my biggest thing. I want to try to breastfeed. It's already been an hour. Like I'm, I'm ready to hold my baby. <laughs> um, take some moment to stitch you up. So they said that they could not sit me up right away because of my blood pressure issues. And they made me eat this nasty ass jello, but I ate it anyway. They were like, if you want to sit up, you got to eat this. And I said, okay, bet. Oh, also wait, back up though. Again, back up after my C-section, Jacob had come around. I'd seen her. Um, I didn't try to touch her at this point. Cause I was like so shaky and just like, ah, so I talked to her. Um, and then I said, I'm about to puke and I am numb like from like my boobs were numb. I was like, what? I, I can't even turn really. And so, you know, like the sucker they used at the dentist, it was like a bigger version of that. And the doctor that had numbed me, I'm trying to use their names just for like privacy reasons. Cause anyway, he gave that to me and he was like, go ahead and go. And it was just water. However, it like hit the sheet thing that was hanging in front of me. And uh, all that water Krista had been running to get me violently projectile vomited all over. It was so much water. Holy shit. So they slowly sat me up and then finally they brought her over to me. While I was laying down, Jacob brought her over to me and kind of laid her next to me, like kind of held her. But again, I was just feeling so gross and like weird. I did decide to do the antibiotic treatment. Um, they said we, we have to go start an IV in her. Oh, I breastfed. So I sat up, I breastfed. Um, and so, um, yeah, they said we're going to take her to go get the antibiotics and we have to closely monitor her. They put her on two different kinds. They have to closely monitor her the first time they give these because make sure she doesn't have an allergic reaction. So they have to do the IV in her hand, then wait, do the first one, wait, and then do the second one and wait. And one of them takes like 30 minutes to go into her hand and they were like, she's probably gonna go on for about an hour and a half, two hours. And I was like kind of scared because it's always like baby's getting kidnapped from hospitals. And so I was like, is she gonna be safe? And apparently it's three locked doors and there's a nurse always in the nursery. Also the floor that we were on was completely locked. You could not get up to this floor. There's a lot of safety things in place. And at this point too, I had breastfed her she had gotten her first round of shots. I feel like the antibiotics and shots are kind of controversial, but it's what we decided to do. It's already been done. I'm not, whatever. Um, so they took her and I was kind of like, am I okay with them taking her? Like I'm kind of, and then I was like, I am so fucking tired. So they took her. We were transferred to women and newborn. Um, and... Our family ended up bringing us food. Jacob got our room all set up. That first night, I still had my catheter in my pee hole. And then I uh, had the IV in my hand. And I had this pain medicine, but I had to push it. And it was every 10 minutes. But when I would push it, if there was any small kink, even times there wasn't kinks, it would like sound this alarm. And I was just like, I want to sleep. I don't think I need these pain meds. Like, I wanted them to take my IV out, but I was also trying to 
lift her and like breastfeed her and the IV ran across the bed to my hand. So I was like, can you take it out? And then finally they did disconnect it because I think I had to finish that before they could give me oral pain meds. I really don't fucking know. But I was like, I am so fucking sick of this thing. So they disconnected it and I just had one in my hand, but I wanted that out too. Um, the next morning they took it out. I was just being fucking annoying. I also slept with these like sock things on my legs that like massage them to help prevent blood clots. I found it very relaxing. Apparently some patients hate it. I really enjoyed it. Um, and the first night I slept naked. I was so hot for some reason. They said that it was hormones and like the drugs and stuff. I don't know, but I was so hot. And your girl, I, I had loosely had a, ro uh, a gown on me and they also put like a, a chucks under me, one of those pads. And then I had like a ice pack pad and on my badge. Uh, and your girl was hot, so I ended up sleeping naked, completely uncovered. They'd come in, and I was like, hey, like, at this point, I had no, what's the word? I didn't give a fuck, okay? I was real comfortable with my body. <laughs> the first night went pretty well. I was able to eat a little bit. They warned me, though, to be careful because I didn't want to puke a lot. So, we did stay in the hospital for five days. Um, that's... The hospital I was at, that's standard. Um, we could have gone home after four days. She had to finish her antibiotic treatments, and then I had, they had to make sure I was good. Um, yeah, it was kind of rough in the hospital. I was on prescription painkillers, and um, I was just in a lot of pain. Um, the painkillers did help, but I was just uncomfortable, and I had emergency c-sections are different than regular scheduled c-sections they're a lot harder on your body especially after i had gone through three hours of pushing that's a long time to be pushing then the forceps which tore me and then the emergency c-section that was very i'm not saying they did anything wrong but if you look it up emergency c-sections have higher uh complications so I was just exhausted. The second night in the hospital, I almost quit breastfeeding because she was basically cluster and comfort feeding basically. And she wasn't actually eating. She just wanted something to suck on. And I hadn't brought a pacifier because I wasn't planning on giving her one until she was four to six weeks old. And I was about to tell them, bring in some formula and a bottle, hand her to her dad. I can't do this. And the nurse had come in at one point and I was crying and she helped me out. Like she calmed me down. She helped me get her to latch. And she was like, you know, sometimes they just do this. And then a couple hours later, she kept hearing her scream. It was like every 10 minutes. I wish I was being dramatic. Sometimes she'd sleep for 20. And the nurse came in and was like, you need to get some sleep. She's fed. I'm going to just take her to the nurse's station for you. Okay. Is that all right? And I was like, you can take her. And she was like, yeah. And she's like, I'll go get some warm blankets. We're just going to hang out. And I was like, okay, if she's hungry, you can give her a little bit of formula. I just want to sleep. And she was like, she is not hungry. She's okay. And I got to sleep for two fucking hours. Bless that nurse. I could kiss that nurse on the mouth. If I saw her in public, I would run up and hug her. Like, thank you. So eventually we were discharged. Um... And I came home to my parents' house that evening. Is there anything I'm forgetting from the hospital? I don't think so. Breastfeeding continued to go well. I saw an amazing lactation specialist. And I've, I've seen TikToks that are like, if you're going to breastfeed, they're going to touch your boobs. And I was like super comfortable with it. Like, um, I did, was given nipple shields because my nipples are super flat. Um, but at one point, we were trying to hand express some colostrum because she like, wasn't wanting to eat. It was this whole thing. She also had a diaper hand because of her IV, like the whole time in the hospital. Oh. I was like, she showed me how and then let me do it. And then the second time she came in and like, we needed to express some more. And I was just like, can you just do it? Like, it's not working. I'm hurting myself. It didn't hurt when you did it. And she was like, okay, yeah. And then another time I was like, can you just put the nipple shield on? Like, I, I can't, I'm trying to hold her. And she was like, yeah. And she was like, you were like a star patient. You were super comfortable. I was like, after the birth I had. 
Also, I, I was a CNA before, and I found that when patients just let you take care of them, it's a lot easier. Like, I would change adult diapers all day, and when you had that one patient that was trying to cover themselves when you're trying to wipe them, it's really fucking annoying. So I was like, she deals with boobies all day. Like, this is her job. Grab my titties. Go ahead, basically. So we were discharged, and the evening that I came home, I actually ended up running a fever. I ran low-grade fevers the night before I left and then the day I left, but they thought that it was just my milk coming in. Um, oh, are you gonna wake up? Hi, guys. So if you hear baby sounds, it's Izzy right here. Come okay. On. I don't look as cute as I did when I started filming this. My hair's going back up. Um, it is the next day, but we've had a wild day. Um, so I think I had left off where I had come home. Um, so the day that I came home from the hospital, I just want to back up a little bit. So when I was in the hospital, I didn't feel necessarily like anything was wrong. Um, I knew that I'd had a really traumatic delivery and like birth, whatever you want to call it. And I knew that my body was going to need more time to heal. I knew emergency C-sections were rougher on your body. When I had, I had a pressure bandage put on because I was um, bleeding a little bit more than they would have liked after they stitched me shut. So, yeah, but I got it taken off 24 hours after surgery. Um, so I showered and then they peeled it off. Um... They said it looked fine. They did check my incision every day that I was there and it looked fine. The breastfeeding has gone really, really well. Um, I definitely have an amazing supply. We have so much, like it's so much. Yeah, the night I came home, I was kind of running a fever. Um, I, I was just feverish that day, but they said that I was probably good to go home. They sent me home with more pain meds because I was still in a ton of pain. And I really, when I, my thing in my head, like at the hospital, I had all this help and I had someone constantly there watching me. I didn't want to be left alone with her on the pain medication because it did make me feel a little bit dragged. Um, but so I tried to wean off of it, but then I ended up being in a lot of pain. We'll get into all of that. So I, um, came home, I ended up running a fever of 103.6, which is pretty high. If you get up to 104, you have to go to the emergency room. So, uh, excuse me, at that point, I was feeling like shit. Um, it's a pretty high fever. So I called the midwives like after hours line my mom did for me. Um, and they called in an antibiotic for me to the, to Walgreens the 24 hour shit and my dad went and picked it up around midnight at also earlier when I had come home I was still having a lot of trouble getting up and moving around I was told I could lift her but nothing more uh, nothing heavier so I could not pick her up in her car seat unlike like I said I was on the prescription painkillers I was not comfortable watching her alone on them even if I wasn't feeling super impaired I just was like, I am impaired and I feel like as a good mom, I should not be left with her. Not that I thought something was going to happen, but it just made me feel better. Like I wanted to care for my newborn, but also it made it harder to get up at night with her. Not going to lie. Um, cause they were heavy pain meds. So I start the antibiotics. They tell me to come in on Monday, which I was sent home on a Friday. Um, so I had spent five days in the hospital. I go in, um, that Monday and they were worried about infection, which is why they put me on the antibiotics. They said that there was a little bit of oozing, nothing crazy, and that it looked a little bit irritated, but it didn't look like anything was wrong. Um, I had been still running kind of low-grade fevers. They just thought it was, you know, my body trying to heal. And they sent me home, told me to finish the antibiotics and take it easy, you know, only lifting her. We did stay with my parents for, I think, about a week. They also had gotten this sleep number bed that they set up in the living room for us that was able to sit up, which was really helpful for me to get out of bed the first two nights because the girl struggled. Also, Jacob was working. Jacob is also a very heavy sleeper and does sleep walk and, like, talk. Like, he'll get up and have his eyes open. Um, and 
so it's hard to know that if he's actually awake or not but basically my mom got up and helped me a lot so then I start having a lot of pain on just the right side of my incision and I thought this was really weird um it got to the point that I couldn't even come close to standing up straight and in the hospital like it burns and sometimes it would take me a minute to stand up completely straight they did give me one of those belly binders I hated that one it was so hard to un velcro and yeah I have a belly bandit that that's what I ended up using once I got home um but we had to do it so tight for me to not be in so much pain even on the prescription painkillers I felt like oh that pain you guys holy fuck I could not I walked hunched over and it was just getting worse and worse every day my family was like you should try and stand up and I was like if I do like I'm gonna hit the ground in pain like it hurts to exist right now I could not find a comfortable position to sleep so I wasn't sleeping I wasn't like I was just not okay so I go back in on Wednesday I called them and I was like something's not right like I don't feel good I am continuing to run fevers nothing as high as I was but I'm not okay so I go back in and once again they're like I'm laying there and they're like it looks a little irritated but it doesn't look like it's infected or like anything's obviously wrong and I'm like on my right side something is not right and that's what I was telling them I was like it is not okay I cannot stand up straight like I walked into their office completely bent over and I was like I cannot stand up straight I have to wear this belly band so tight to get any type of relief like it's probably too tight I am not okay and I'm like when I'm pooping I have to hold pressure on the right side because it fucking hurts so bad so which I was on stool softener so my my poops weren't that bad that first one was rough but after that I've been okay I'm still on the stool softeners though so a month after I gave birth so um they were looking and then they decided to poke around a little bit and try it had come open a little bit they said on Monday when I went and my stitches because I was moving sometimes like the skin can't grab and it'll kind of overlap and you know it'll still heal um but they thought that's what the irritation was and that's why you know I was having some discomfort and that's why it looked a little angry um this day they said that it had kind of done that on the right side so there was a little opening I'm guessing I didn't look I was really freaked out <laughs> and they ended up poking around and they realized it's not closing there in that spot. So it's supposed to close from the inside out and it was trying to close from the outside in. I don't know exactly why this happens, but it had started collecting fluid underneath. Um, my fascia, I believe it's called, the base layer was closed. So it was like the bottom of that was closed. So the other, all the other layers they had stitched were fine. Because it's my understanding they have to like stitch my uterus and stitch other things. So those were all fine. It was just this top layer. However, it was about four of my fingers wide and about up to this knuckle deep. Okay. That's how big my incision was. The opening, the, uh, the open part. So they're poking around, really uncomfortable. I had to wait an hour for an OB to come down to look at me. And evaluate what we needed to do they got in contact with wound care and they sent me home they gave me more prescription pain meds and I was like I'm trying to get off of these like I have a newborn I'm not even able to go home I don't feel comfortable watching her alone and they were like that's probably smart and I was like okay but I don't want to be taking these and they were like you're gonna want to because you're gonna have to unpack and repack this twice a day and I was like come again and it's gonna be painful and you're gonna be sore in between and you're just gonna hurt and I was like what so that first night Jacob watched how to do it basically we had to wet this packing pack it in there that's what they did cover it and they also were saying though the packing was getting soaked as quickly as they were putting it in at first so we had to kind of change the plan 
wound care has better stuff i only have to change it every other day now um the packing has silver in it and i really like that because now like i can take a motrin and i'm good so yeah that first night we hadn't fully waited for the pain medication to kick in um and because i was kind of starting to feel drugs so i was like oh it's probably working it was not working we waited another hour and it fully kicked in but I could feel him pulling the stuff out and it was a lot of packing and they said that it was fine if some tissue, which I'm sure it's tissue, I don't know why I'm saying that, but tissue came out with it, my tissue, and then I could feel him repacking it. It was so painful, even after the pain meds kicked in, it felt very uncomfortable, it just felt wrong. And my parents were pissed. They were like, why did they send her home with this open wound that's this big? Like, we can't create a sterile field. They didn't even give us gloves. Like, what the fuck? And I was like, I can't do this. I don't want it repacked. I'm done. Like, once he got it out, I was like, I'm done. I'm done. Like, take me back to the hospital. I don't fucking care. I'm done. And my mom was like, we can take you to the emergency room. And I was like, I want to go. I, I need pain meds, like, higher pain meds. I can't do this. And then we decided to wait the hour. But as my mom was like, at this point, Isabel wasn't taking a bottle and she was like, you don't want to take her to the emergency room. You're going to wait for hours and it's going to be the same thing. Like, we might as well just try to do it here. Um, so I believe that Friday, leave the baby alone. I went to wound care and they, that's when they gave me the packing that's every other day. Yeah, they were like, you need a wound vac. And I was like, the fuck? <laughs> They had told me I needed a wound vac at my midwife's, but I was I was really not wanting one. So a wound vac basically applies like negative pressure. It sucks 24 hours. That's the vacuum part. Um, and there's like this sponge. I don't really know a ton about it because I ended up not needing it, but they put in the order for it. They measured it, looked at it, and they said, again, it's not infected. They put me on different antibiotics though. They changed my antibiotics because I think I was still running low grade fevers at this point. Um, just to be safe, they said this this antibiotic is more of what we're going for. I don't fucking know. So yeah, or maybe the midwives changed my antibiotic. It's been a traumatic, okay? I'm trying. So they said that the tissues looked good. Again, didn't have an infection. They swabbed it to see if it grow anything, it did have a little bit too much of this bacteria that lives on your skin. It's a strain of staph, but everyone has it living on their skin. I know you think staph and you think of like staph infections. No, um, it lives on everyone's skin. They said I had a bit of an overgrowth, but that was before I finished the antibiotics that they had swabbed it. Um, and they said that as long as it looked okay when I came back in, they weren't going to put me on more antibiotics. So I was like, cool. And before y'all come at me for like, can you be breastfeeding on these pain meds and on these antibiotics and all this stuff? I felt very bad about it. I did do my own research and decide to continue to breastfeed. Um, not as much goes into your breast milk as you would think, like very little of this stuff. And very few infants have had reactions to the things that I was on. So I did watch her closely to see, you know, if she got a weird rash or anything like that. Um, I would have pumped to keep my supply up and dumped it, but I would have supplemented with formula at that time. So we ordered the wound back. It came in. I was set to go back a week from a week the next Friday with wound care. So I go in and my wound had closed by 40%, which is like unheard of. Um, they had me taking vitamin C, wanted me to keep taking my prenatal and taking care of myself which I didn't do the best at. We'll get into that. Um, and it's continued to close at my last appointment. I, they told me I could mail the wound back back. So they told me when it closed 40%, we're going to wait if it continues to close like this or close well, and you don't have issues, you'll be good. Um, so they did tell me I could send it back. However, the issue is I'm feeling better now. So I'm moving around a lot more and I'm irritating it. So when I'm moving, it's it's causing it's like closing but then i'm moving around and it's you know it's it's just slowing the healing process it will eventually heal so they told me to wear my belly binder again down there it's just like a a belt basically um a big flat belt 
but to wear it not too tight um, because I was told originally to stop wearing it. Now, well, that was by the midwives. They told me to wear, it's a whole thing, but they told me the, the more I can keep that skin together and not moving and stuff, um, the faster it'll close. So as of right now, they think in two weeks it will be closed, but I'll still have to be very careful. And then two weeks after that, I should be completely healed where I can like swim and take baths and shower with it uncovered and everything. So that's really cool. That puts me at two months postpartum. So, um, however, we did discover <laughs> I am breastfeeding, like I said, and you need to eat more. And I don't have an appetite. Like I was, I was caring for a newborn. I had come home. It's, it was a lot, you know, I have help, but it's, it's a newborn. I love taking care of her. I love being a mom, but I would just forget to eat. And I'd be like, I'm not hungry. I'm fine. No, you're breastfeeding. And yeah, I have lost, I weigh less now than I did before I got pregnant. I look different. My belly's still pudgy. You know, I had a kid a month ago, excuse me. Um, I look really good for having a kid a month ago, especially with how big my belly had gotten. Um, but I have lost 38 pounds. I lost 38 pounds in, in three weeks. That's not good. And at first I was, I got back to my pre-pregnancy weight in a week and a half. I've stayed at this weight. I started eating again. Okay, so hang on. I was wrong. So a week and a half after I gave birth, I was back to my pre-pregnancy weight. Um, and then in a week after that, I lost five more pounds. I lost five pounds in a week. Um, I lost 33 pounds in a week and a half. And at first I was excited. And then I was like, I'm trying to close a wound and breastfeed a baby. That's not good. So I'm not, I wasn't super good about getting protein in before I got pregnant. And then after, when I was pregnant, I was better about it. I was better about my eating habits. But since having her, I would, haven't been the best. I really like starchy foods and then snacks, you know, and that's not working for breastfeeding or for my wound. I have a really good supply but my breast milk wasn't filling, so she had to eat so much and eat for so long, and she was getting really frustrated um, because she would get tired, And but it wasn't as nutrient-dense as it should have been. So she was okay because I have such a big supply, but that was, that was a rough two nights, three nights. Um, and then I did some research and realized I'm not eating enough. Also, my blood pressure has been low at my appointments last week. Um, it was within normal limits, but it was low for me because I ran kind of high during my pregnancy. My body's going through a lot of changes though, so we're giving grace. So, excuse me, I have started e eating way more. I drink at least one protein shake a day, usually two, and they're super filling. It's the, but I still eat meals. It's the Premier Protein Shakes. Um, they told me to drink those. Um, I'm supposed to eat three meals a day and at least three snacks a day. And then when I get up to breastfeed, eat a snack and not unhealthy snacks, healthy snacks. That is a lot of food for me right now. So I am just trying to make sure I get my three meals in and my two protein shakes. And then I do snack at night a little bit. I'm not very good at it. I do make sure to get enough water. Um, but I don't know where my appetite went. <laughs> like I was so excited to not be pregnant anymore and like, just eat a bunch of unhealthy food because, like I said, I had gestational diabetes. I was excited to just eat. Um, and I wasn't worried about getting back to my pre-pregnancy weight. I was like, I'm going to give my body grace, especially after the birth I had. I was like, we're not even going to worry about our weight. But then, like, my belly, like, disappeared. Um, and I was... My whole family just noticed, like, you look so small now. Um, I weighed myself, sure as shit. <laughs> yeah, this is my birth story. This is why I haven't uploaded or... I've uploaded some videos recently, but this is where I've been trying to heal, take care of a newborn, and kind of keep up my house a little bit. I'm going to go so when she wakes up, I can tend to her. Are you going to wake up? change your diaper and everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, 
if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down below. Um, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to follow along on our journey. And yeah, bye guys.